I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. Al Hive with BS3 Network. What was the inspiration behind the hang with Tang on Instagram? Where was that? Where did that idea come from? Well, uh, when I got to K-State, I wanted to do something with the students, and our marketing department came up with the idea, particularly a young lady by the name of Ari, and Ari's unbelievable, and she came up with the idea of the purple couch and sit and talk with the students, interview them, then interview me, and then this year our engineering students took it to another level. They put wheels and a motor on the couch, and it, I can operate it with a PlayStation remote control and has a Bluetooth so I can play music and... And now they tell me next year there's gonna have a leg rest so I can like I see, lay back. I, I noticed that because you're yeah, is, yeah, I, I, I could. A little bit. Well, you know, I had to work the core a little yes, bit, but okay. uh, right. so so I'm excited about the future of Hang with Tang. There we go. Now, now we're gonna turn into like a reality show coming up pretty soon. No, nah, no, nah, no reality. Just 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 spending quality time with the students, man. We got the best students in America. Yeah, he did. Uh, this Coach Prime shades and uh, the, the blenders, and uh, was thankful for him taking the time with me. Uh, you know, like we, um, Dion runs a, uh, he's a CEO of a, a multi-million-dollar corporation, and there are a lot of things that having him having done this for a while and the team that he has around him because of his experience in the NFL and Major League Baseball and then working on TV. There are a lot of things about the business that he sees and his team sees that as somebody new coming up that I, I, I may not see. It might be some blind spots and I, I wanted to talk to him and find out, you know, what is it that, I, what's not, what am I missing, right? What's around the corner that I'm not seeing? And, and to meet with his team and uh, Constance with Smack and she, you know, they had some ideas for me. And so I'm looking forward to working with them and just learning about how to be a better CEO. While well, into practice now, do you feel like the, the Israel trip helped you? Have, have you seen maybe you're ahead, ahead of where you would have been? Um, yeah, we're, we're a little bit ahead. Uh, uh, we're also a little bit behind because uh, the way we played in Israel um, is going to be a little different than how we play uh, moving forward. And But the good thing about going on a trip allowed me to see some of the new guys um, that they can do some of the things that I thought they can do bringing them in. Also, if David didn't make that trip and he was with the Dutch national team, did you, how did you feel that helped? Oh, his confidence is through the roof. He had a, a great trip with them. Their coach did an unbelievable job with him. David uh, had played some big games and uh, against some really good competition, and so you can tell like he just he's just carrying himself a little bit different with the confidence. Which are new returners? Who do you feel like can make the biggest leap from what we saw from them last year? Well, I need them all to, to make leaps, uh, but Cam Carter has put in the work to turn himself from a role player to a weapon, and I'm excited for that. What's the difference about this experience for you, this media day going from last year? I, I kind of know what to expect, you know, um, like the moving around, multiple radio inter. Like, like last year, I, I, I was bothered because I felt like I was just repeating myself, and I didn't know. At times, it didn't feel like I, like I was just regurgitating answers rather than being myself. And and now I, I'm okay with it. Man, I love it. I love this summer because we didn't have to worry about whether the Big 12 was going to stay together or not. It was just how big were we going to get. I love the, I mean, uh, our, our commissioner and his vision for uh, expansion and, uh, you know, especially on the basketball side. Uh, we're, we're the elite basketball conference in the country, and he's only helping us to get better at it. And uh, that's going to allow us to recruit at a higher level and, because kids want to play in the best conference in the country. I know as you read the remarks that uh, was mentioned made yesterday about Big 12 tournament, uh, working as keep it in Kansas City. Is that news to your ears? How do you feel about that? <laughs> if you'd asked me this question two years ago, I'd have been like, that's not fair. We need to have it in the South. So now I'm located somewhere where I absolutely love it being here. <laughs> so we, it can stay here forever. I'm all right. <laughs> the final question for me, why shouldn't uh, anyone be surprised that you're able to 
Oh, man. Ooh. You know, I, 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 I don't know how to answer that question. I just know that um, the things that I've been able to accomplish in my life has been because of the favor of God on my life and His blessing. And um, God's allowed me to have people around me that think like mine and, uh, and uh, we're all on the same page. And so when you get people who are operating out of a motive of love and they're together, it's, you, you can't, there's nothing you can't accomplish. Well, I mean, they're both weapons, right? Like, the like on any given night, either one of them can score 20 points, and so they immediately add something to the team. But their experience, I mean, Arthur Kaluma was arguably a bad foul call away from being in the Final Four. You know, Tyler Perry is MVP of the NIT tournament. He won a JUCO national championship. Those guys have winning DNAs, and uh, and so they understand that there's always sacrifice and winning and and you know, and they understand hard work. They, they approach the day like professionals, you know, and uh, they have a routine, and and they're able to share that with other guys, and and um, and they're both coachable, and they're willing to to allow themselves to be held accountable. What should Kansas State fans expect from this year's squad? Man, we're gonna be the toughest, fastest, most connected, grittiest team in the country. Yeah, well, you know, I'm trying to, I want to play, If well, at 18, you want to play six or seven high major teams in the non-conference. Um, if you go to 20, then you're going to have to drop a couple of those. Um, you know, I, I still would like to play in a, an MTE that allows us to go to an island in Thanksgiving, and I think uh, that's a reward for our fans and ourselves, so, um, but that's where we're going to have to drop a couple um, high major games in the non-conference. What's kind of the vision that you have this, this year for, for David? What are you expecting? David is, for his size, he's as fast as, or faster than anybody uh, in the country. And he, he there will be times he has a mismatch on the floor where we can run offense or initiate offense through him. Um, his ability finished over 70% of his shots last year at the rim. He shot 50% from three, but it, he only took six of them this year. I want him to take uh, you know, a few more. And uh, just his, his confidence and leadership. Uh, and and you, he can switch a ball screen and guard anybody. And so that, that, that's going to help our defense. And how has the freshmen kind of progressed since this time? Well, they're freshmen. And uh, they're going through all the freshman things that freshmen go through. and. But they're they're talented, and cream rises to the top, and we just, they just have to keep churning. Um, Keys actually did a call with the guys or in a, a group text and got on them because um, they didn't make a certain time on a on a run during Shark Week, so he's paying real close attention to what's going on. Keontae's in Montreal right now. I think the the Thunder are playing a few games there in preseason. And uh, Keontae uh, met up with one of our former players, Kenny Cherry, who's from Montreal. They took a picture, sent it to me. So those guys are aware of what's going on. They're staying in contact. They're talking to the guys. Uh, and then all former players think, like, the coach gets softer the next year. So Shark Week was not as hard as it was last week. And I, I got to be tougher on them and all those things. So... Uh, they're funny. Throughout Shark Week, was there anybody on this year's team that just stood out to you and you said, this guy's just, his work ethic is just unbelievable? Uh, nah, not, not really. It's it's really not a, like, if they stick out too much, then I'm not doing a very good job. It, it's about, it's really to find out who's your leaders on the team. And um, that that's like, Coach Reem always says, applications are being accepted right now for, for leadership. Coach, can you, from like the casual fan, explain a little bit more about Shark Week for those who don't watch the Okay. 
So my really good friend, who's a terrific coach, Alvin Brooks III, right? Um, he found this video where Kobe Bryant said uh, somebody wanted to challenge him in a one-on-one, -on -one, and Kobe gave the guy 10 points, said we're going to 11, and the ball first. Then when the score was 10 to 10, Kobe looked at him and his friends who thought he could beat Kobe and said it's a whole lot different watching it on the Discovery Channel than it is actually getting in the water with the great whites, right? And uh, I mean, and, and so it's just a mentality that you have. And so Shark Week always comes on on the Discovery Channel. So I tell our players, like, we're going to discover some things about ourselves and about each other during this weekend yeah. and build a mentality that nobody else, they think they want to play us, but they really don't want to step on the floor when they get there. And that's, that's all Alvin Brooks III. Oh, we're still looking for it. We're still looking for it. You talked about getting the veteran guards to maybe take some pressure off the off the freshmen. Do yes. You, is that kind of a deal with the freshmen? They have to earn your trust. Or? Well, it's it, it's not about like it's not about trust. It's about they just haven't experienced it, right? And uh, I mean, these uh. I've seen too many coaches that uh, thought they had time, and in the second year, you know, like there's a search for a new head coaching job, right? And uh, so we got to win now, and you need experience to win now, and those guys need to have e e experienced people around them to help them grow, right? So it's not about whether I trust them. I need them to grow, and the best way for them to grow is to be around the other experienced guys who have been through it to help them along, because I can say it all I want to. It doesn't have the same impact as when their peers tell them. Is there any of them right now that you think is, is ready to, to step into a major role? No, not a major role, but they're going to have a role. What's kind of the biggest thing that's impressed you from both Jarrell and, and, and Taj, and what's the biggest thing that you've missed for you all? Um, Jarrell's competitiveness has picked up. And I mean, he's always had talent, but his competitiveness and he's becoming more consistent. Um, for Taj, it, it's, we're, we're changing the way we play. So it's been, he's, he's got a little struggle adjusting and, but he's a worker, right? Like that's the thing I've appreciated about him. Like he spends time in the gym, he puts in work extra. And so he's gonna continue to get better. Well, I'm glad you asked me that question, right? And, um, you know, to, to win the national championship, I think you got to have a really good big. And um, guys want to play in the NBA. And in the NBA, um, there, there are a whole, whole bunch of five out, versatile bigs who can dribble pass and shoot, play off a dribble handoff, or, you know, make plays from the elbow or from the top. Very few guys are on the block anymore. Right, and uh, so I want to be able to recruit an elite big, and so I wanted to run an offense that I can go into a household and tell mom and a young man and their family that look, this is our style of play, and this is how it's going to help you to translate from being successful in college and then playing in the NBA. When was it you, you made the decision? To... Uh, probably uh, after the season last year. Um, but then I wanted to, to see some things. Uh, we didn't start putting it in until we came back from, from Israel. Is it fair for people to hold you to the standard of a Final Four appearance or an Elite Eight appearance going off the first year? Um, you know, I, I don't think it's any more fair than thinking that we're going to be 10th last year, you know. So we, we have our own standard within our program of where we want to be. And I hope every year... Our plan is every year to put a team together that gives us a chance to go to the Final Four, right? Now, what happens when, well, get to the tournament. Once you get to the tournament, it's about matchups and if the shot goes in or doesn't go in. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff, but if we give ourselves a chance, then when we get there, you know, we're going to be all right. So um, I, I really don't care, think much about other people's standards for us. As we think more about our own standard. What does that next step look like for us? Consistency, consistency. Like, um, I mean, that's 
that was the feedback from the NBA guys. Like, you know, they, they want to see him consistently perform at the level that they know he's capable of performing at every night and not just not every other night or every third night. It's kind of weird you've got another former colleague now in Grant McCaslin in the league. What uh, what kind of relationship did you guys have? I, I absolutely love Grant McCaslin. Um, there was a time in my life where I was in bad shape physically. I like locked in on work and um, not exercising and uh, um, you know, I knew it. I could feel it. And I was like, man, I need to get in shape. And Grant got up every morning for over a year with me and worked out at 5.30 in the morning. And I wouldn't, there were times I didn't want to get out of bed, but I knew he was going to get up. And so I got up out of bed to be there with Grant. And uh, his investment in my life and caring about me as a person uh, is going to allow me to live longer. And so I tell people he saved my life. And uh, I love him. He's a terrific coach. He's a great human being. And uh, just, just uh, I'm happy for him and his family. Jerome, what did you learn about yourself? What did the coaching staff learn about working together? Yeah, you know, in year one, um, I think they all had ideas because of where they came from, how things should go, how to do things. And what we learned last year, what I hope they learned last year is like how we want to do it. Now it's not like other people's ideas. This is how we want to do it. And so it's more of we're now doing the things that we believe in, not because they did it somewhere else, but because this is how we do it here and this is how we have success. You mentioned scoring and experience with Tyler and Arthur. Has there been anything else that's popped up that maybe you didn't realize they were going to be able to bring to this team throughout this, this preseason stop season? No, I knew they were, were winners, right? Like in their whole, all their careers is in high school and college, they won. And so I knew they were winners. I knew they were really good people. That's why we were recruiting them. And so I wasn't surprised by any of those things. Now I need them to not be as nice to their teammates, you know, because leaders can't always be liked. And uh, that's, that's a stretch for them because they like to be liked. No, that that's that's how our offense was ran last year, right? Like whatever the makeup of the team is, we're gonna have an offense that fits the makeup of the team. I, I want to play with multiple point guards on the floor, so nobody can take one guy, another guy away. I want to lift the big and be able to stretch the floor so that we have nobody at the rim, so those little guards that I like can go finish better at the rim. And uh, if you have a center down there, you have a defender down there and then it makes it a harder finish for the guard, so that's why we, we want to lift it. But So you have to have a skilled guy that they have to guard out there in order to be able to you know, play in a five-out system. You good? I don't remember you answered this in the previous thing, but Dorian, is the red shirt thing resolved? We're working on it. Yeah, still working on it. How is his progress there? He's coming along. Man, he, he is coming along, and uh, I, I, God has given him all the physical abilities, and now it's just about work and between the ears for him. And it'll get there. It'll get there. We just got to be patient. What was your reaction when you saw the schedule come out and there was no Crystal Lake before you <laughs> um, that, that trip of Texas, Baylor, right, and – we got to stay down there in January and because there were no students on campus. And uh, that, was, that was a really special trip. I was hoping we had something like that. Not necessarily go to Waco, but maybe, you know, Austin to Houston. I, I, I can't tell you I'm sad that I don't have to go play at Baylor in the new arena. I'm not sad about that. So. Are we on a time limit or a question limit here? Yeah, but back in the back. Uh, any questions? You want to come up here? Y'all, y'all come on up here. <laughs> Can we bring the players up now? I get yes, out. Yes, you're done. I'm you're done. done. You're done. There we go. Bring it in, stars. <laughs> Ask.